Well, here I am taking the dogs for a, a walk in the park. Nothing unusual about that, you might say. Well, for me it's a bit unusual because I haven't been able to do this for about two or three years. And the reason goes back to my childhood. And at the risk of boring you, I'll uh, tell you the story. My dear departed dad used to always tell me, he'd say, whatever you do, never get a motorcycle because they're dangerous and you'll get hurt. He'd tell me that over and over again. In fact, he, he had an incident when he was a policeman. He crashed a Harley Davidson at his first attempt to ride one. That was back in about 1946. Anyway, he used to tell me over and over again, whatever you, whatever you do, don't ride a motorcycle. Well, despite all Dad's warnings, when I was about 19, I decided I was going to get a motorcycle. But I was dirt poor at that stage, and I couldn't afford a, a proper motorcycle. So I had a look in the, in the uh, trading post, which was a, uh, a newspaper of the day advertising second-hand gear for sale. And I found a, a second-hand Honda 50cc bike, 50cc, so top speed on, uh, on the level without a headwind was about 40 mile an hour. Can't recall how much I paid for it, but it wasn't very much. So I used to ride this 50cc Honda to and from work and uh, also ride it to visit uh, friends. I'd had it about three months when uh, I was going to work one morning and uh, had a minor accident at a set of traffic lights. A car on my left came through the red light and hit me on uh, with his bumper bar on the left side of the bike. And I came off the bike with a uh, compound fracture of the tibia and fibula, and uh, a bit of bone sticking out through my lower leg. So I was taken to hospital, ride hospital, and I was put in the motorcycle ward. It's interesting that there was a ward devoted totally to people who had had motorcycle accidents and Dad's warning came back to me in colour. These poor people with uh, weights on their legs, they'd been there for months and they were going to be there for months still. Fractures of the thigh, they were in traction as they called it. Fortunately, uh, my brake didn't need traction. I was put in plaster and the plaster ran from my toes up to my groin. That was to stay on my leg for about nine and a half months. All up, I was off work for just on 12 months. So uh, that was my first and last experience of a motorbike. What I didn't know at the time was that uh, although the fracture was to my lower leg, it was going to have profound effects on my ankle. Uh, there must have been trauma to the ankle at the time of the accident, and perhaps the bones um, weren't properly aligned and caused a misalignment of the ankle. So whatever the reason was, uh, my ankle got progressively more and more painful over the years. I visited a couple of specialists, but uh, there really wasn't anything they could do. They just diagnosed increasingly severe osteoarthritis over the years. I did know from visiting specialists that the, the only solution available was to fuse the ankle to stop the joint moving and uh, that of course stopped the pain if the joint didn't move no pain the only problem is if the joint didn't move then i would have a, a limp and walk funny and progressively i'd get pain through the rest of the joints in the in the foot and then over time i'd have to have other joints fused Oops. Okay. <laughs> Yep. I'll head back to the other bridge, the second bridge. Come on. No, not that way. This way. 
so it wasn't a nice prospect and I decided that I was only going to use that option as a last resort. So the pain on my ankle got worse and worse and uh, I began hobbling along and modifying the way I walked to try and minimise the pain. But eventually it reached a point where the risk of falling was increasing and of course as, as you age your bones get more brittle and falling is not a good thing. So I just had to cut down the, the amount of walking I did and eventually I got to the point where I couldn't walk the dogs any longer. So uh, the accident, the motorcycle accident, was 54 years ago when I was 19. And to save you the maths, that makes me 73 right now. So about six months ago, my dear wife convinced me that I should see just one more specialist. And uh, she was hoping that maybe, just maybe um, with the passage of time, there were some options available other than fusing the ankle. So we, we got a referral from uh, our doctor and uh, we struck it lucky. This particular specialist had been specialising in hip and knee replacements and also more recently over the last couple of years he'd been doing some total ankle replacement operations and uh, the success rate was about 90 percent at that stage uh, because it was still not mainstream it was a little bit expensive so Linda and I talked it over So the specialist gave, gave us some information to search for on the internet to have a look at how the operation works and I'll put a link to that in the description below. There's a very good 3D animation of the entire process of replacing the ankle joint and once I'd had a look at that the 3D animation it all made sense and I thought it was worthwhile giving it a shot. So uh, we went back to the specialist talked over all the pluses and minuses again and decided to go ahead with the operation. That was two months and two weeks ago. And here I am out walking with the dogs in the park again and it's fantastic. I don't walk with a limp anymore. My gait is pretty much normal again still have reduced mobility in my ankle, I can't tip my toes down as far as I used to be able to and I can't lift uh, my toes up as high as I used to be able to. That I think will improve a little bit over time but probably won't ever be as good as my right ankle. Nevertheless uh, I'm delighted with what I can do now. Still getting a little bit of pain but that's mainly from the Achilles tendon which is inflamed at the moment. And that's probably because I'm putting more stress on it than I used to. I did have times uh, in the past where I've had to have cortisone injections in the Achilles tendon. So it is susceptible to uh, inflammation and pain. But again, hopefully as I start to walk more, more and more, all those things will disappear. So right now I'm up to about 6,000 steps a day. The most I'd, I've ever been able to do, and that was about six or eight years ago, was about 10,000 steps. So I have no doubt that I'll beat that quite easily in the months to come. So with all this behind us, my wife and I can now start planning for uh, some more adventurous things like um, and longer walks. Uh, we can go bush walking again, go walking on the beach, because it had it had got to the point where traveling by plane had become uh, a bit of a nightmare because of the amount of time you have to stand in queues uh, before you depart and uh, then on arrival of course long queues again at immigration and customs. So uh, plane travel was something I wasn't looking forward to very much, even though I enjoyed it once we got to our destination. 
particularly visiting family and friends in the Philippines. But now, all well, that's behind me. And we can do some of those long walks. Even just walking through a mall is going to be a pleasure again. My life has changed. And it's all thanks to my dear wife, who insisted I should visit a specialist just one more time. <laughs>